rational function inside a power function. Three x over four x plus two to the fifth power. If we were trapped, the rules we had before, without the chain rule, God forbid, what would you have to do? You had to multiply this thing times itself five times, expand the whole thing out, and then do a monstrous quotient rule on it, right? stuffed inside here, right? Now, instead of doing what we did a second ago, what I'd like to do is just explain it the way I think about it. And it is, all you're going to do right now is a power rule on the outer function. You know that already. So all you're going to do is bring down the 5. So you want dy dx. This is the way to, to look at it perhaps more efficiently. dy dx is going to be 5. Just differentiate, you differentiate around the inner function, right? Just take the 5 down and lower it to a 4 like you always would. Keep the junk inside the same. X plus 2 to the fourth. Now multiply it by the derivative of the inner function. Now I'm going to write that in notation. So I need I need d dx of inner. Okay. Make sense? So now we can have a chain of uh, equalities here instead of trying to just make all these pieces and then push them back together, we can just have a flow of sequence here, right? So now all I need to do to, to complete this is to find this derivative, right? So that's going to take a quotient rule. So the derivative now is 5 times 3x over 4x plus 2 to the fourth times this derivative is going to require a quotient rule of just 7. It's a really simple quotient rule. It will be bottom and the derivatives are simple enough, so the derivative of the top is a 3, minus the 3x, the derivative of the bottom is a 4, over bottom squared. Everybody follow that okay? And then just try to cancel and combine and simplify whatever you can. So it looks like here there's a 4x times a 3, which is a 12x. You have a negative 12x here. So those are going to go away. I'll be left with simply a 6 in the numerator of this part, correct? Okay. That 6 can only can be combined with this 5 over here, right? That's a 30. 4x plus 2 squared down here, and this 4x plus 2 down here is equal to the fourth power. You can combine them together. Okay. <clears throat> Who knows what 3 to the fourth is? Close. What's 9 times 9? 81. There you go. 81. So 81, right? 3 to the 4th is 81. And you have the 5 and the 6. So what's 81 times 30? 2430, right? Yeah. 2430. So we have a number 2430. We have x to the 4th as well. And on the bottom, we have 4x plus 2 raised to what power? to the fourth, and it's being squared, so to the sixth. So there's what it looks like at the end. So there's a lot of simplifications done all at once, uh, I admit. But just to spare myself another line here. You guys kind of followed though, right? I mean, well, not really. You could get to that if you had to, if you took it like two more steps or something, right? Wait, can you show the step of the, when you're, when you have all this stuff to the power of four? Yeah, I mean, you would knock that out. Four, four, oh. four. Okay. So three to the fourth is eighty-one. Okay. So you have that now. This giant pile of stuff apparently is just six. Right. So now you got six times five times eighty-one. That's twenty-four thirty. Here's your x to the fourth. And these two multiplied together are going to be the six power. 
That's all. Right. So these are simplified uh, derivative there. And so the four x, so all the four x's that were. Oh, you know, you didn't cancel those. Did not cancel any of the four x squared. Did this one happen to make a cancellation up here? But I didn't like uh, cancel okay. factors. I didn't cancel any factors yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't get that number. You said five mm -hmm. times eight. Oh, eighty-one. Oh, five. Well, six times five is eighty-one. Oh. Six times five times your head uh, Oh, I got it. Okay, then All right, so I explained this using this particular structure here. This is told in the textbook, it's called version two. Version two of the chain rule. You now, write out the symbols for version one. It's really the same thing, of course. But you could see both notations in homework and in the textbooks. So I'll make sure you've seen both. Is dy dx is dy du du dx. Okay. That's channel uh, version one. Yeah. It means, in a sense, there's some sort of intermediate function. That is the inner function. U is actually the inner function. So what this is trying to say is y that. It's just saying the same thing with the Leibniz notation. That's all. So okay. instead of f of x and g of s. They use y and u. And here's right, dy du is this part, right? That's the dy du. And this is the du dx. It's the exact same thing. Different notation, exact same thing. Does it matter which one we use? Okay. What I want to say? Right. So, although I think I mentioned this before, all of these look like fractions, and they're supposed to, it's supposed to look like fractions, they're not fractions. So, the, a cancellation here is not really legitimate. It just turns out that the product of these two derivatives is the same as that derivative, which is an important thing to know in general. All right? The product of two derivatives can create another derivative. But it is meant to look like it would cancel, right? So that conceptually it makes sense to you to know about rational expressions, right? But this whole thing is just one object. dy du is one thing. It's not, it's not really a ratio of two things ultimately, right? right? So we'll, we'll use the little expression they have here. We'll do the same thing for number 12. It says use version one, so y equals sine of x over four. <coughs> so what I would do then to use version one, I guess, according to their notation, I would first write that y equals sine of u. Y equals sine u. So then what's u? U must be the x on four, right? Same thing as f and g, just y and u. 